tonight. What would be your, your message to President Vladimir Putin right now? Right now. Right now, stop the war, begin to speak. That's it. And what if he doesn't? We speak to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky as Russia's invasion takes out a maternity ward and children's hospital and the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine. Right now, we're seeing hundreds of families streaming out from Irpin just a little up the road here. You know, over the past 12 days, this is a town that's been consistently bombed. We're hearing that these people wanted to get out, but they just couldn't. Then millions have fled. Val Kipnis takes us to the Polish border, where people who left their whole life behind now face an uncertain future. Plus, in Russia, information about the invasion is mostly propaganda. Alec Loon tracks the staggering crackdown on anyone who's spoken out against the war. <laughs> This is Vice News Tonight. I'm Krishna Undavolu. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said this invasion was meant to liberate Russian-speaking Ukrainians. He promised civilians wouldn't be targeted. That was clearly a lie. Russian missiles are falling on neighborhoods. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a fucking lie. No shit. That's what happens when you invade a country. This is why it's completely unacceptable to invade a country. Apartment complexes are being shelled, and at least one maternity ward was destroyed by a direct attack. Russian mortars hit a road where families loaded with suitcases and pet carriers were trying to escape immediately. Um, did anyone watch this? Is there TOS in this? ...killing a woman, her two children, and a family friend. These aren't just tragic examples of civilians caught in the crossfire. They seem to be part of Putin's new strategy to break the Ukrainian will to defend themselves. Ukrainian President... No blood or TOS, thank you. ...and Volodymyr Zelensky just sat down with our own Ben C. Solomon. Can you make a compromise with Putin? Can you trust Putin? Trust? Oh, no, I trust only my family. How can you make a deal with somebody you don't trust, then? We have to. We have to. Because to stop this war, how to stop this war? Only dialogue. And only dialogue with him. He is the president of Russia. Respect. Great take. He's fucking right, dude. <laughs> Vice guy's like, uh, I don't know. Trust? I mean, maybe he's going to want to murder you. You should definitely not trust him, though. And Russia. Oh, fighting against Ukraine. They came to our land. To Great our fucking take, dude. And to our children. We, we didn't, we didn't invite them. Yes, we didn't invite them, but they are, how, but they are uh, here. What would be your, your message to President Vladimir Putin right now? Right now? Right now, stop the war, begin to speak. That's it. And what if he doesn't? I think he will. I think he will. I think he sees that we are strong. He will. We need some time. It's a great interview, and we'll have a longer version tomorrow, but I spoke to Ben earlier about what he was seeing in Kyiv. That's a really good take. I, that, that's it. That's the perfect take. Straight up. I mean, people looking at that and still shitting on that, that's crazy. He's not saying like, oh, we need to keep continuing the war. We're going to destroy Putin's forces. We're going to march on to fucking Moscow next. He's not doing psychotic bullshit. That's actually true. Like that is cor the correct take is negotiations must start now. That's what I've been saying as well. That's what you do when you fucking care about your people. And he's right. I mean, it took him a while to, to get to that point, uh, unfortunately. Possibly because, uh, what do you call it? Uh, possibly because it's just, you know, America kept saying like, oh no, we got you, we got your back. Literally saying the same thing, Grain Nips. Get mad at you for saying, yeah, no, I, I agree with everything that he just said.
So right now we're seeing hundreds of families streaming out from Irpin, just a little up the road here. Over the past 12 days, this is a town that's been consistently bombed. We're hearing that these people wanted to get out, but they just couldn't. Just wait. Worse is yet to come. You haven't seen nothing yet. When Zelensky actively wants to stop the fighting and is willing to sit down and negotiate, and the forces within Ukraine that have other political interests and now have javelins and NATO weapons and training from NATO countries decide that's not actually the appropriate thing to do. Fuck you. That's when shit really fucking takes the next level. You will see perspective shift dramatically. And, and I'm saying if that happens, if Zelensky does actually try to uh, negotiate peace, and, and they've done like three or four, I mean, they've done ceasefire conversations multiple times, right? That's a little bit more different than like full-blown negotiations that end the war. But they are actively in talks. They have envoys that are constantly and consistently talking to one another. Even Lavrov uh, got in on the conversation in Antalya in Turkey. I mean, they're, you know, they're working. They're working on it. I mean, they're, they're fine, like, they're not dying, I mean, they're, they're not bleeding or anything, they're alive, but they're, like, being carried by ambulances. Seven fifty-five to eight just went through the whole thing. Okay, well, thanks. Have you heard about what's happening inside the city there? As I know, it's like a day. Uh, the Russian military army just go in different buildings, just sit and wait. They try to change the clothes for uh, civil uh, people and try to go uh, out for the event. Oh, so you're hearing that the Russians are taking off their uniforms yeah, yeah, yeah. and trying to blend in. Absolutely. Are you worried that they're going to advance? We're Ukrainian. We don't worry. <laughs> We're fighters. As you see, that's like uh, grandmother or grandfather. Bro, that saboteur shit is so fucking terrifying. Not because, like, a few Russians are going to fucking infiltrate Ukraine or some shit. But it's legitimately terrifying because territorial defense, which isn't exactly which aren't exactly ready for fucking full-blown combat in the same way that a conventional military, a standing military is, is going to then be extra paranoid about anyone and everyone that they encounter. That is a legitimately terrifying situation on the ground. Bro, what is happening today, bro? Oh my god, s band is here. What? And, and don't break everything there. I'm eating too, but... Anyway, you can, yeah. I cannot believe Misgive did not. Typical, dude. Okay, well, I'm covering it currently, but um, they're they're in the process of ceasefire negotiations. Here, you got to talk into that microphone. Wait, really? When, since when? when they've they... been they've been uh, doing ceasefire negotiations. There's um, a war. Yes, there's a war happening. Rick. Bad. Yeah. Um. S band is here, ladies and gentlemen, because Miss Gif said that uh, you know he was at my house and then uh, did not tell S fan that he had left my house to go somewhere else. What's up, guys? Which is classic, classic yeah. Miss Gif behavior. Um, sick pants, by the way, those are dope. See, uh, these are cool, aren't they? Yeah, they're Looking fire. Shirt. The shirt's good too. You guys got good merch. Nice. Anyway, um, but yeah, if you if you look it up, it'll come up. It, no, it's I, not. I, I'm gonna sit off camera and look it up. All right, you do your thing, you yeah. know, uh, and I'll continue here for with this. Okay, we're we're back to the we're back to the news though. Don't worry about it, boys. All right, we're gonna continue. All right. Father, Ukrainian soldiers, everybody try to do what they can. 
How has it been for you and your family there? How has the past few days been under siege? Ben joins me now from Kyiv. Ben, what's the mood like on the ground? Well, Christian, the mood here is tense and every day getting more and more tense. For the past 10 days, the attacks have been ramping up on the outskirts of the city. And really here in Kyiv, you can feel the borders closing smaller and smaller. So for people here in the city, the feeling is that soon they're gonna be able to punch through the lines and the Russians will be able to take more and more control. So people are preparing themselves for that. Which is, by the way, diametrically opposed to what you hear, why you only watch Western propaganda. First of all, dumbass, where can I get Russian propaganda? It's all fucking banned anyway. And secondly, it's not even true. I literally do look at fucking what Russian sources are saying as well. Like, so that's not even true. You're wrong. People literally say I'm a fucking Putin mouthpiece because unlike other, unlike other fucking outlets, I at the very least try to understand what the Russian perspective is a little bit, um, even if it's fucking bullshit. And... It's, it's completely, like, it's just, it's, it's banned from every avenue, every outlet. Right, S-Fan? Mm -hmm. Russia Today is banned everywhere. Oops. But Soviets. outside of the city, yeah. in places oh. like Irpin, where that video was, people have been living under constant attacks for the past 10 days. Those people are streaming into the city. They haven't had water. They haven't had electricity. The reality for them is that that situation might soon come here. We're hearing reports that in 10 days, 14 days, this city, Kyiv, might run out of water. So the stranglehold of the Russian military is taking its effect, and people here are getting really nervous as to what happens next. Erpin in that clip has been a really shocking example of possible war crimes by the Russian side. But you've also been in Kyiv, Lviv, and Odessa. What are you hearing about the targeting of civilians? Well, from what we're seeing here, it's been a clear targeting of civilians by the Russian forces all over the cities. Uh, in Irpin, clearly, you know, the past few days, there's been really recent aggression just towards the people that were uh, walking out and evacuating from the city. But the reality is, all over the country, we're hearing reports that people are being extorted, robbed to, to evacuate these cities. Even as the Russians set up these humanitarian corridors to let people out, we're hearing that they're not safe at all. In places like Irpin, we talked with people that said to leave that they had to pay $3,000 to try to get out of the city. There might be here, apparently. We heard from other people that said bodies were strewn all oh, over the it. streets. Oh, And that people nice. were being attacked, not just in good, the uh, crossfire, but in their nice. homes as well. Uh, people all that we talked to were scared, were exhausted, and they were saying that the Russian attacks are targeted to cause fear and frustration amongst these people. And what's the sense of, you get of where the conflict is at now? So the feeling on the ground for the soldiers that we've been talking to is the past three or four days have kind of been a time of calm, comparatively. Uh, a lot of them are worried that, you know, because the shelling has been limited, because their progression has been slowed, that the Russians have been taking the past few days to really re-prepare themselves for a bigger, stronger attack. If cities like Kharkiv and Sumy are any example, then the Russians are no longer afraid to attack these places with demolishing force to really scare the civilians out. The worry is because they've used these humanitarian corridors and these evacuation times to get as many people out as they can, that now the attacks will be more brutal, more aggressive, and the people left inside will be ha having to face them without the opportunities to leave like they've had in the past few days. So war is bad. Yes. It's hard to take. watch what's yeah. happening. You, you have a better take than like most Americans, so in that's Ukraine cool. Ukraine and you. support Russian President Vladimir Putin. What's your take on people that lived under Ukraine bombing eight years? Are they for you too? What? Dude, you make it seem like I don't give a fuck about people in, in Donbass, okay? You're you're so it's fucking it's stupid. Dumbass. Okay, don't say that. They're going to get fucking mad at you. But <clears throat> you're so fucking <laughs> stupid for, for coming in with a claim like that when, like, the neutralization and Minsk agreements 
are are they literally revolve around uh, referendums and the recognition of the, like the Donbas region, specifically LPR and DPR, as autonomous, not nations, but basically autonomous territory that is still within Ukrainian borders. That was the original fucking Russian state goal, regardless. And I have talked about it numerous fucking times. As a matter of fact, I talk about it all the time. You're crazy. Like, when I don't... S-Fan, it's really weird. When I don't mention every aspect of a fucking active war where, you know, new information is coming in nonstop, people just automatically come in here and they're assume, uh, their, their assumption is like, oh, that must mean you didn't mention Donbass, so that must mean you fucking hate those people. You, you must want them to be murdered. You know why they do that? Why? It's because I they, respond to it? Well, no, no, no. Like, that's like the, that's the, the, don't feed the trolls response. That's boring. For real, it's, I think you mention it, you say it, and you're talking about this whole thing over the course of like 5, 10, 15 minutes. And then they come in at like minute number seven, and they don't hear what was said in minute number five. And they just assume, they're like waiting for you to say something wrong. You know what I mean? Or they just want to assume that you're not saying something. Yeah. It's that's really that's fucked up. usually what I do whenever I watch your streams. I hate watch your streams, sorry. That's good though, you're right. <laughs> but some Russians still do. That's in part because the Kremlin controls what information gets out about well, I thought the, the war. Kremlin didn't They're exist. They're saying footage of atrocities is being that was with faked. the Soviet Union. And Ukraine is actually attacking its own cities. Is the Russian and government. And if you try to Russia. tell the truth, oh. you could end up in prison. Alec Loon reports. The KGB. Why did they why did they steal? Aren't Kremlins also in Donkey Kong Country? Yeah. Aren't the aren't the yeah. lizards yeah. in Donkey Kong Country yeah. called Kremlins? Yeah. I have no idea where you're I don't know. Yeah. A man oh, has just unfurled a poster here, um, anti-Putin poster here against the war. He's being arrested immediately. Police are not giving anyone even a minute to speak out or say anything critical of the war. The Russian government is stopping protests against the invasion of Ukraine before they can even start. They've also taken independent news outlets off the air, banned publications from calling the war a war, and made spreading so-called false information about it punishable by up to 15 years in prison. Many foreign media suspended their reporting in Russia. Facebook and Twitter have been blocked. American journalists! American journalists! Yes! <laughs> the funniest part about that is that, like, I mean, they do. We do this as well, for the record. Like, there's so many fucking foot. There's so many videos. He's laughing because the guy's like American yeah, journalist. Yeah, yeah. Like, that was his distinction. He's like American. <laughs> yeah, like that's gonna stop them. But I don't care. Also, even in America, you say that to the cops and they still beat your ass. So what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know why he thought that being in Russia was gonna help him, uh, and and saying that in Russia was gonna help him in any way. What if he said Russian journalist? I mean, I think they wouldn't believe him, probably, because, you know, he's... What is it? What if you said Russian journalist in America, do you think? So, do you get your ass beat no matter what if you're a journalist? Oh, okay. My Uber's here. Yeah, oh, there we go. go. Dude, you're, you're, you upgrade your setup in life. I want to do all this. Yeah, Sick. there's a lot going on here. This yeah, I know. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. All right, well, that was S-Fan, S-Fan TV, ladies and gentlemen. One of my greatest hate watchers. Um, he was here. Uh, he's leaving right now. Buy our merch. 22. I got our band. Wait, okay. All right. Nice to see you, dude. All right. See you later tonight. Bye, everybody. All right. A lot of guests rolling through the, the Hassan compound today. A lot, lot's happening. Dissent has become almost impossible. Since the war started, police have arrested more than 13,000 protesters. I don't know how Miskip manages this. Like, I, I, I just don't understand. I legitimately don't understand how I, how he is able to like have a, a cohesive, coherent like stream of consciousness backed stream, like all the, all the guests coming in and out all day every day. I guess it's the ADHD, and also there's not really like any pre prepared content that you have to like arrive at. Right. Olga, a doctor and anti-war activist, has been arrested dozens of times. This time, police let her go with a fine after several hours in custody. Now she's back to doing what's basically become her day job, 
visiting detained protesters. И вы сюда пришли за, за что еще? Людей задерживают просто. И надо понять, в каких ОВД они находятся, потому что у них отбирают телефоны. Надо выяснить, в каких они ОВД. Надо как-то обеспечить адвокатом, надо как-то обеспечить продуктами. What does it feel like to see your country do something that you disagree so much with? I just think that somebody has to stop it. The whole big wall cannot stop one person just thinking about it. Do you think Russians should have done something or could have done something? You know how 90% of the people live their life is television. What they tell them is what, what's happening. So I'm coming to the store and people are telling me that Ukrainian David Rostov. I said, what? Oh, they showed the green speak. Despite Western sanctions, state polls suggest 65% of Russians support President Vladimir Putin's military operation in Ukraine. For the record, at least the and I need to stress this, that number is insanely low. That number is insanely low. Understand how fucking low that number is, okay? Dude, dude, the fact that it's not like 99% out of Russia too, for two reasons. One, polling from the Russian outlets are obviously going to be a little fucking skewed, okay, no matter what happens. That's why I always look to, at the very least, like Western polling. Um, I look to Western polling, which is also going to be skewed in a different type of way, but you have to match the biases of Western polling with the biases of like Russian internal polling. But regardless... 65% is literally insanely low. Like, that means that there isn't widespread support for it. I know it seems like it's so stupid. You're like, what the fuck do you mean? Um, 65%, that's like the majority. No shot. U.S. support for Iraq was higher than 65%. Yeah, it was like 75% when it first started, or at its, uh, in its beginning, right decision, 72%. 79%. That's crazy for, especially when you consider like Russian standards and where it should be, um, for, you know, Russian metrics, which are obviously different. Like, think about that. You're out here being like, Russia is an authoritarian country. They fucking manage and monitor all of the, they manage and monitor all kinds of fucking information. You're watching Russians get their ass beat and fucking arrested for the crime of saying that they're against the war. Okay. And even then, it's only 65%. Meanwhile, free nation, freest nation on the planet, and it's like 75%, 79%. Think about that. In America, it was like... Think about that. We're a free nation. I, that's what I want you to understand, because those, those factors are true. They are important when you think about, you know, the attitude of a nation. Picture of it painted by propaganda. Our Alexander Slatkov вместе с российскими военными у полностью окруженного Мариуполя. Трагедия в том, что националисты препятствуют мирным гражданам, превратив их в живой щит. Popular TV shows like this claim the military is defending Russian speakers against Ukrainian Nazis. One of the voices pushing that narrative is Maria Butina, who served 18 months. Yo, our Republican queen, dude, Maria Butina. I cannot believe that she fucking honey potted her way into like the top of American politics and NRA. Wild to think about. Months in U.S. prison for conspiring to infiltrate the NRA and Republican political circles. As what do you mean conspire? I mean, yeah, she did that already. She successfully did that. Look at that. Agent. Now she's in parliament and voted to recognize the breakaway republics in eastern Ukraine. I mean, they all She's did. even been wearing the Z symbol that marks invading Russian tanks. 
I do think that the fact that many Russians probably have Ukrainian family versus most Americans who don't care about Muslims or anyone in the Middle East affects the difference in ratings too. I think that is part of it as well. And you still have Americans being like, no, actually, we have this morally over the Russians here. Like, 65% of Russians are in support of this fucking unjustifiable invasion of Ukraine. And you're still, Americans still want to be like, no, 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 actually, uh, that was somehow less justifiable than Iraq, actually. And it's even crazier that, like, a smaller percentage of Russians are an advocate for, for this. You know what I mean? Oh my god, I missed two hours of your stream because of your tweet. God damn it. Okay, first of all, I tweeted more. I literally quote tweeted that tweet where I said uh, I lied. I was wrong. We actually ended it early. I was still supposed to be on set right now at this point. People being like, but can you trust the numbers under the propaganda influence? Why would Russia reveal numbers that show that the support for the war is actually lower than they are? If 90% of Russians want war, why would, they, why would the Russian state literally say, oh yeah, only 65% want war actually. We're doing a very bad job. Why would they do that? Please think about that for a second. What good would that uh, do for the Russian state? Same reason Ukraine releases puffed up numbers in wartime. Wait, wh but what do you mean? Russia would never... Guys, it goes against... Wh what is this? It's 5D chess? To just go against the, like, the narrative that you're trying to craft that like Russia is 100% united on war? If anything, they would say it's a higher percentage, which is my argument. Y'all are fucking crazy. <laughs> People think they people think they're they're calling out 5D chess while they're playing 1D checkers. They're they're playing zero dimensional checkers, dude. If you are to say that the percentage of Russians that support the war numbers are too high, I agree with you. I do. I do agree with you. I don't think the percentage of Russians that support the war is at 65%. I think those numbers are too high. But if you think Vladimir Putin is purposely releasing information that makes him less popular, then I don't know what to tell you. You are so lost in the sauce that I don't know what kind of, like what, he's just hurting him, his own information, I guess. Bro, she's one second away. I swear to God, she's one second away from saying the Russian military is the most moral army on the planet. If she says the Russian military is the most moral army on the planet, I'm going to lose my fucking mind, okay? Straight out of the Israeli copy uh, uh, playbook. Straight up. She keeps saying the Russian military's task is to bring peace to Ukraine. The Russian military does not use... Don't trust the fake I'm news. Uh, the guy says, we see videos of how Kharkov, Sumy, and Kiev are being bombed. And she says... Uh, you know, the Russian military does not use weapons against civilians. Чтобы Украина сама могла выбрать нормальную, легитимную власть. Также более шести тысяч человек detained for protesting against this war. Тем более сегодня, когда не исключены возможности провокаций, не исключены возможности провокаций, не исключены возможности провокаций. Это не исключено. It's so fucking whack that every country does the same propaganda. Like, you're not coming out with anything new, really. Just, like, get new content, dude. Get better content. Get new content. Stop using the same content over and over again. It's literally just recycled American talking points. It's recycled IDF talking points. It's recycled American talking points. They're just copy-pasting America's shit. Yo! You're biting our style, Russia. What the fuck do you mean? She's like, literally, we have to take this... We had to take this aggressive measure because otherwise, you know, what if Ukrainian terrorists attack our territory? 
That's messed up, dude. Therefore, it's impossible to go. What detained are doing today isn't protected by Russian legislation. These are spontaneous actions. Even something as seemingly harmless as laying flowers for a murdered opposition politician is heavily policed. Boris Nemtsov was a, an opponent of the original Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2014. He was killed on this spot. People are trying to commemorate his death today by laying flowers at the spot where he was shot dead. But police are moving people on. Okay, I can't be the only one who thinks it's kind of sick that the cops use Ushankas, though. Like, as a part of their gear. Also, unironically less geared up than the American police. Just straight up. Anyway, that's the that's the last positive that's the last positive thing I'll say. But also, they don't have helmets on, they don't have riot gear on. Many suspect the Russian state played a role in the shooting of Nemtsov, an outspoken critic of Putin. This year, people are coming out both to honor Nemtsov's memory. Bro, anyone that says their fucking state does not kill civilians is just is fucking delusional, psychopathic propagandist, okay? There is not a single state actor that has not murked civilians in an act of unjustifiable war. If you're going into war, you're murking civilians. Even if you don't mean to murk civilians, you're going to keep killing civilians. It's, just, it's war. Why do you think we're against war here? Like, do you think we're against war because it's aesthetically not pleasing? No, that's the whole point. That's literally it. It's just like it destabilized people's lives. And that person's being sarcastic. I know that person's being sarcastic. I'm launching a larger point off of that. I'm launching a, I know it's sarcasm, chat. I'm not yelling at that person. I know that's sarcastic. Oh my God, I can't even make fucking arguments anymore. I can't even have like my own style of commentary anymore because everybody fucking uh, it, it acts like this is, that person is being sarcastic. But my anger and my resentment is towards those who unironically make it seem as though no civilian casualties happen, like what Maria Butina was saying. So remember, anyone and everyone that says, oh, dude, there's no civilian casualties in, this, in our war, it's like, it's fucking bullshit. You're a liar. You're a liar. You're a propagandist. You're bloodthirsty, okay? But we already knew that Maria Butina was bloodthirsty. After all, she used the NRA to penetrate the American government. So actually... Another person who did that was, uh, what's his face? Fucking Sasha Baron Cohen. The NRA is like literally just a gaping hole for, for access into the halls of Congress. You could literally just get in with every top level politician the moment that you are like even remotely aligned with the NRA. And to protest the conflict in Ukraine. But you move the shit in she penetrated other things too? Yeah, bussies. Republican butts is what she penetrated with her dildo as she pegged republicans probably i don't know you know they're into some kinky shit oh my lord the White House needs his commentary. I agree. Why does the White House not allow me in? Okay, I'm outside of the gates on January 6th saying, hey, let me in, let me in, in, in the Capitol. You know what I mean? And they're like, no, we won't let you in. And it's like, what the fuck, dude? Well, the cops let me in. Why won't you let me in? White House. Just saying, like, fucked up. <laughs> In the years since Nemtsov was killed, most opposition politicians have either fled or been jailed. Vladimir Putin. <laughs> There's chatters that like over the course of the past fucking week or so have been advocating for the the death and destruction of everyday Russian citizens, some of which have attitudes that closely resemble what that lady is doing. 
So just remember that the Russians are not a monolith. They're not fucking bloodthirsty maniacs that are uh, totally thinking that it's great and wonderful that Ukraine is being blown to shit. Respect. Respect. Straight up, Russian government is reportedly working on a law that will make some software piracy illegal. Fuck yeah, dude. Do it, bitch. Do it. You won't. I'm sure. I'm sure the funniest part about this is going to be like Microsoft and all these other uh, other uh, companies are going to be like, wow, that's so fucked up that they're doing that. Hey, guys. Hey, what the fuck? It's like, okay, well, you have sanctions. So what do you mean? Like, are they supposed to just die? I'm sure they were paying before. No, I mean, they just mean like officially. Russians are extremely online, okay? Extremely online. What is it, like 80% user base for 80% uh, of the country uses the internet? It's like Turkey, dude. They, they got motherfuckers that every, every motherfucker knows how to use a VPN. This just means they are going to look the other way and not criminally prosecute people that are doing piracy, but that makes sense. Guys, le law legalizing theft? Yes, dude. Yes. Also, theft is legal, dumbass. They steal your fucking natural resources they, they poison your fucking water. All that shit is legal. They steal your wages. All that shit is legal. You never think about that. But the moment that like, you know, oh man, piracy is legalized. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, you legalizing theft. Stop it. Anyway, um, but what I was going to say is like for most people that don't understand, most of your cracked video games come from Russians. I know I was about to say that I lived in the other side of the planet very close to Russia in comparison to the United States of America. And let me tell you something, folks. If it wasn't for those brilliant fucking Russian hackers, I would have never been able to. In a Vox video, no fly zones just drop. Possible TOS. Bloody faces of survivors. Okay, we'll watch this after. Thank you, young PZ. I lived in Turkey, man. I lived in motherfucking Turkey, dog. If it wasn't for Russian hackers, I wouldn't have been able to play all those fucking video games I played. Are you crazy? We don't get them. We actually don't get those games. We wouldn't get them until like, you know, fucking months later, sometimes years later when it's legal. And it was so expensive too. And guess what? Turkey, piracy is illegal in Turkey as well. And let me tell you something. There were straight up storefronts. There were straight up brick and mortar storefronts that sold illegal cracked and hacked copies of video games and movies. Like, real, you would walk into a fucking DVD store thinking, like, oh, I'm about to buy a, a real DVD. It's like, nah, bitch. It's like, literally, if, you know, three lira. You're like, what the fuck? Why is it so cheap? Oh, it's because it's bootleg. Some dude fucking filmed it <laughs> with a hand cam. <laughs> Battlefield all <laughs> This Turkish dude paid six hundred lira for Battlefield twenty forty two. He says I hope you starve in your shit, Dice. DJ. <laughs> uh. Ukraine has roughly 44 million people, more than neighboring Poland, and the majority of them haven't left the country yet. But it's important to remember this invasion just started. And before long, millions more could be trying to escape. Val Kipnis has more. Two million people have left Ukraine since the invasion started two weeks ago. Half were children who've been sent out of the country either alone or with their families. Ludmila is from Kyiv. It took her four days to get to the Polish border with her two young girls. That's $40 though. Bro, $40 is a lot of money in Turkey, man. What the fuck? What are you talking about, dude? Oh, never mind then. Like, what is the what's the fucking Oscari Jit now be sure on the Turkey there, Bakalum? Um net dort bin ikuz uh tele. 
Günlük. Yeah, that's like a daily minimum wage is 166 lira. Daily. Daily minimum wage is 166 lira. So that's one fucking... <laughs> that's like almost 6x that for one fucking video game, dude. 40 dollar 600 lira siktirsin gitsin Allah Amerikan. Evet yani. In Mexico, good pays fifteen dollars. Chad is so America pilled. I know. Every time we talk about anything outside of America, the the average Westoid leftist's brain is just broken. Like it, it, it's pretty funny. Like they'll just be like, "What do you mean? That's only forty dollars, bro." Yeah, dude, totally. <laughs> And also, we're talking about Battlefield 2042, brother. $40 for Battlefield 2042 is unacceptable in America. It's not even a game. Like, it's like barely a fucking game. It's a broken mess, dude. Are you kidding me? They should pay you $40 to play the fucking thing. <laughs> what the fuck? Ми прокинулися в 5 ранку 24 числа, зрозуміли, що ці вибухи, вони по всій Україні. Ще було сподівання на наступний день, що можна залишатися в будівлях, але через один день ми зрозуміли, що спокійніше не буде і заради дітей, що потрібно виїжджати. А кого-то ви оставили? Так, залишилась сім'я, батьки, рідні. Муж ваш залишився? Так. Ludmila's husband stayed behind in Kiev, like most men between the ages of 18 to 60, who were legally not allowed to leave the country and expected to fight. Even the fact that to the house, it seems not so scary as just to shoot people in peace people, in their homes. You don't have any evidence of this. No, my father Yeah. <laughs> Вони навіть як почали ті вибухи і ті перші їхні жахливі реакції, ти розумієш, що ну, ніби потрібно казати про реалії, тому що не зрозуміло, чому ти раптом пакуєш речі і швидко-швидко виїжджаєш. Якось розповіла, розумію, що щось кажу страшніше, вони починають дуже плакати, тому ну, намагалася на позитиві і саме тримати її, наскільки то можливо. Але додому дуже хочеться, звичайно. Сподіваємося, скоро повернемося. If I was making any videos interviewing Yemeni's mothers and recording their children, uh, they did. They actually unironically did. And then they turned around and actually sided with Saudi Arabia. So the answer to that uh, question is, is way worse than you think. They literally did a Saudi Arabia piece where they were like, well, the Houthis are really fucking bad. So, yeah. <laughs> The European Union has thrown open its borders to Ukrainians, agreeing to shelter refugees for the first time. A sharp contrast to how it's responded to other refugee crises. How did you manage to make it worse with like four extra words? I mean, that's uh, they, you know. Eight miles away from the border crossing is Przemysl Station, the first train stop into Poland for people coming from Ukraine. Transportation hubs are overwhelmed with people. They have done Yemen coverage, though. They have. As well as with those headed in the direction. And they have covered direction. civilian casualties Into too. Into Ukraine. But also, they have done. Uh, you know, both sides are. You know, Saudi Arabia is is not as bad as you think. Type thing. Ukraine is asking for volunteers from outside the country to join them. Already, more than sixty thousand men have come over to help according to Ukraine's Minister of Defense. Many of those going back are Ukrainians working abroad. Gotta say, when I see the numbers of refugees flooding Europe and U.S. complaining about the cost of gas, there's a literal... Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, the numbers of refugees flooding Europe and U.S. Are, are you saying when the numbers of refugees are flooding Europe... 
You know, that's still a little bit of a sussy take. But you are right. Americans only give a fuck about their gas prices, obviously, because that's the only way that, like, any sort of global conflict touches them. The irony, of course, is that those prices could be regulated easily as long as America decided to, you know, whip their fucking uh, corporate oligarchs a little bit. But, of course, we... Uh, unlike those bad countries, are not run by oligarchs. Oh, wait, yes, we are. We just don't call them oligarchs. Yeah, okay. Some volunteers aren't Ukrainian and have no ties to the country. I was just watching it all the time. I couldn't sleep. I was watching it. I was going to walk. U.S. ambassador to the U.N. What? Holy shit. The U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Thomas Greenfield, condemned Russian use of cluster munitions, saying this indiscriminate weapon has no place on the battlefield. The U.S. mission then deleted her comment from the transcript because the Pentagon won't endorse a ban on cluster munitions. Why? Do you guys want to know why they won't endorse a ban on cluster munitions? Because we use them, obviously. That's Look at that. 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 Yo, that's awesome. We make them and we use them and we sell them. Make them and we sell them. Come the fuck on. This shit isn't funny. Not you laughing, but chat. I mean, dude, wh wh what can you do in that situation? What can you do in that situation? It's just like, it's a clown ass fucking thing to do. The other part of it is half the goddamn time. That's why we laugh whenever, <laughs> whenever like, you know, Hillary Clinton comes out and has the audacity to be like, mm, you should not target hospitals. It's like, really? Really? Hillary Clinton? You're saying this right now? Hillary Rodham Clinton? Like, am I, am I, I'm losing my, Condoleezza Rice, bro. Motherfucking Condi Rice went on Fox News and said, it's always uh, uh, illegal to invade another country. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? You're Condoleezza Rice. You're like literally a war criminal. You're on Fox News right now saying, calling out balls and strikes. Like, what? How? She said invading a country is always a crime, dude. Should they not say it? Bro, it's like Hitler talking about fucking genocide elsewhere. Hitler being like, well, you know, it's very unacceptable what the Americans did with the indigenous genocide, I think. Like, well, are you insane? It's like, you're actively doing it. <laughs> when, <laughs> would you take that seriously? What the fuck, Austin? What is he saying? Why are you live right now? Yo, wait, what do you mean, why am I live right now? What kind of a question is that? I came back home after I wrapped up. What do you mean, why am I live right now? I will ban you right now. What's he saying? That's it. He wanted attention and he got it. And now he's done. He's like, all right, I'm out. Peace. I don't know why he's not responding. Okay. Hypocrisy is really ugly, but do you prefer these people not to talk? Yes. Yeah, dude. I prefer them to go to jail. If you're like a, like, it's like Harvey Weinstein talking about misogyny without like ever going to jail. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Like, well, what do you mean? Your words are completely insignificant and inconsequential. And worse than that, you're using this to act like you didn't do anything when you did. Do you not understand that point? Like, do you not get it? They're literally using Russia's unjustifiable actions to clean their own hands of the fucking blood that they have on their own hands. They're using Ukrainian blood to launder their own fucking uh, public goodwill. That's crazy, man. That's crazy that so many people are like, well, the energy is right, dude. Like, fucking, I uh, fuck that energy, dude. What, what do you mean? It's disgusting that you are letting them unironically get away with this bullshit.
Answer Mr. Austin question. Why are you live right now? You may tell him. What? You're waiting for your daily top of the hour bait. Okay. <laughs> Fucking. I read it and I was going to scroll away, but it was too late. It would have been fucked up if I scrolled away. Yeah. It's top of the fucking hour. You got me. Yes. I'm live right now so I can serve ads. That's it. That's the real reason. At the top of the hour, there's a six second hour break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. You can do that for $5. You can do that for free with the Twitch Prime. You can do that by getting gifted this sub if you're lucky. But here's the, here's the one minute ad break now. You fucking got me. Yes. You my ass, dude, in the fucking QRTs. I was tired, came home, I watched it, couldn't sleep again. And at one point, I just choose on my own and say, hey, I wanna go there, I wanna help. Do either of you speak any Ukrainian? No. So there is a real possibility that <laughs> she looked what at you're going into is very dangerous. You may die in Ukraine. How are you sort of reckoning with that? Oh, it's always a possibility, but. As long as we're able to help. Bill Block, thank you for allowing five people to no longer see the ads. Of course, yeah, I was thinking about it. It can happen. You go into this country and you maybe did nothing there and you're already dead because of a rocket or whatever. But if you have this in your mind all the time and you want to go there, you just get crazy. Uh, yes, it's true. I, mean, I accept it. Who did you guys leave behind at home? Uh, for me, it's my father my mother some friends yeah because nobody is happy about it that you choose to leave i mean i told them two days ago and 24 hours later i was already in the train it was not that easy for them and it's still not easy so you told them when you arrived yeah what did they say uh, they're basically begging me to come back but i made up my mind A lot of After people that people are horny the... for war don't understand that, like, dude, what do you think is going to happen even if you survive? Even if you survive, you're not going to be right after that. You know what I mean? You're just, you're fucked. Anyway, I mean, good luck, but. Train. Most of them come up here. There's rooms designated for women and children that are meant to serve as help locations, but also just a place for them to rest and eat. The signs here say things like information about living and housing, where water and food is. Here, it just says that you can get a free SIM card. For those who don't have a ride or an idea of where to go next, most go here. Особенно первые дни меня трясло до такого ужаса. Я спать не могла. Я просто закрываю глаза, там бомбят, я их открываю. Ребенок спал, а я нет. Like at least vets that at least vets that are you know horny to go out there are like looking for a sense of normalcy in their lives. I don't know, like they're trained. You know what I mean? Still not great, but straight up better than just like an untrained person just fucking going out there with a gun in his hand. Like he got a NATO issued weapon, and now he's like, "All right, I'm gonna go fucking." I saw the fucking European brigade. There was photos of them on the internet. They don't even have fucking scopes on their rifles, man. What the fuck are they doing out there? I've seen some of those volunteer forces, brother. They got you out there, no scope whatsoever. You're just, you're literally fucking what? You're gonna aim down? You're gonna use the iron sights? You're fucked, dude. Ophelia is a single mom who left home with her eight-year-old William and their two cats. Я в отсутствии чувства реальности, времени. Не понимаю, какая дата, сколько времени. Я не могу абсолютно спланировать ничего. Я прошу всех, пожалуйста. Someone doesn't shoot. Dude, are you kidding me? Are you really going to act like it's fucking easy to shoot with iron sights, especially if you're being shot at? What are you what are you talking about? Not a single fucking veteran in here would agree with that idiotic take. There's a reason why the American military is kitted out the fucking wazoo, homie. Do you think this is COD, dude? Or do you do you think this is Call of Duty, you fucking dumbass? You think you're gonna one hit people? Jesus Christ, people are so stupid. I know ACOX costs money, but you know, it's it's entirely it's it's very, very difficult to fucking It's very fucking difficult to, to shoot without that shit. Помогите мне спланируйте, купите билет. Я не знаю, что делать. Потому что я не сплю, я не могу спать. 
но я не могу только принять войну, потому что абсолютно глупая вещь. Никто не хочет Третью мировую, но, по-моему, она уже есть. И я думаю, боже мой, вся Украина теперь руины будет. У меня папа был дитё войны, вот у меня теперь дитё войны. Скажи, что ты думаешь о войне? Водиция Страшно? Ну, страшно. Да. Ну, ты хорошо держался, молодец. Ты устал? Он зомби. Да. Он зомби, ты такой же, как мама. сегодня поспать, да? Да. Ага. Ничего, скоро приедем уже, и все будет хорошо, да? Да. Он единственный, кто не паникует. Благо, успели уехать. Но я надеюсь, достаточно ли далеко. The Taliban and Shroud use iron sights? Yeah, I mean, Taliban, I'm pretty sure, would love to be able to have battery packs and fucking scopes. The point is, you know, $10.8 billion is going into Ukraine. I'm sure they can buy some fucking, some scopes for their weapons. Also, the Taliban now do have veteran, veteran here. There's no way you're going outside the wire with iron sights on your service rifle. Yeah, but that's America, though. Americans don't let their fucking uh, American troops, American troop casualties in comparison to like a country like Russia, for example, is not a good comparison because, you know, what is it, every fucking boot like uh, uh, at least a hundred grand or some shit? You know what I mean? It's a hundred grand worth of gear that you have on your fucking, you know, cornbread body that just got shipped off to fucking Baghdad. It's just not. You're, you're, uh, then also on top of that, you have millions and millions and millions of fucking dollars of superior, uh, you have millions and millions and millions of dollars of superior air coverage on top of that. You have, you're kitted out the ass, you fucking get shot at from some uh, Afghan dude, maybe the one guy in the village that has a scope shooting at you from a fucking mountaintop, and you dig into a trench and you call for air support, and then they fucking zap the entire. Uh, line of sight until you're fine not even millions and millions of billions of dollars i don't know how much the fucking i don't know how much a kit costs i i don't know the gear is not 100k it's expensive not cheap okay i was wrong i said 100k they're saying seventeen thousand five hundred dollars worth of gear according to the associated press wait what the minuscule cost of gearing up a chinese soldier what the fuck what is this article nearly half the equipment value comes from the soldier's most important tool the standard issue type 95 automatic rifle of Chinese. Wait, what? Oh, it's just the, the in comparison. That was a rich guy take us on. This is actually surprisingly cheap. This is a lot cheaper than I, um, this is a lot cheaper than I thought it was going to be. I, I thought it was actually. <laughs> My man said, that's a rich guy take bitch. This rich guy's paying for that fucking gear. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Rich guys are literally directly paying for this, okay? Straight up, out of pocket. The next day, Ophelia decided to go to Belgium, where she has some friends, moving ever further away from the home and loved ones they left behind. Hello, mama. Привет. Мы сейчас на вокзале в Пшемышле. Мы уже готовы выезжать с котами и Вильямом в Европу. Дальше. Мы едем в Бельгию на автобусе Фликсбас. Так что не волнуйся, все будет хорошо. What's Belgium? Береги себя и не находись возле окон, хорошо? Давай, доедай быстрее, допивай сок, если ты его не допил. Документы, документы. Ну, во сколько ждет? А, через 30 минут мы выезжаем. Вильям, одевай курточку. Курточку одевай. До побачення, дуже дякую. До побачення. До побачення. Ручку, До побачення. ручку дай, держи. Окей. Ви можете йти. Дуже дякуємо вам. До побачення. Бережіть себе. Дякую, герої слава. Так, видно Зевса? Думаю, Зевсочка. Ні, ні, не треба це відкривати, Вільям, не треба. It's our bus. Так? А, 3.60. Oh, yes, so oh, yes. Мы это сделали. Круто. 
Это было сложно, но возможно. Так что нет ничего невозможного, главное верь в себя. Нет ничего, чтобы не было в твоих силах. Всегда себе это повторяй. As the Russian military escalates its attacks on humanitarian corridors and targets civilians, the exodus out of Ukraine is only expected to grow. And the country that people left behind may not be there when they return. Dude, this is like the weirdest people. Like, I just, I'm not having a conversation with you, dude. Take a week off, okay? People that think I'm like directly having a convo with them is just like so wild. Sometimes. <laughs> Просыпайся, Егор, просыпайся. Ну, я знаю, мы маленькие. И все, пошло, все. Пойдем, уже сейчас он видит, и пойдем, уже пойдем, 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 где будет тепленькое тебя все грею. Хорошо? Хорошо? We're just at the start of this horrifying humanitarian crisis. While most people are escaping through Poland, there are many routes out of and back in to Ukraine. Hintasan has been covering this war for years. She's with us now. The mayor Kim, of Melitopol, Ukraine, has been abducted. Ukraine from oh, the Hungarian no. Hungarian border. What was the situation like there? Well, we saw families who were traveling in the opposite direction on their way into Hungary. There were women who were in tears children who were clasping their teddy bears and men yes it's me to their i'm there because they couldn't i'm actually over. very pretty uh in real life i'm hind hassan with them but as well as the people who were and on, they have a cool accent foot, there were many people in cars the traffic was incredible in fact there were cars backed up for miles and miles because even though around two million people have fled the war in ukraine there are many others who are still trying to leave as the war continues after we crossed into Ukraine, we then headed to a city called Lviv. And then from there, we've come here, a place called Vinitsa, which is also a city, but further east. Both of these places are considered to be relatively safe. They are being used as transit locations for people who are fleeing the fighting. But even though this city is safe, there is still a threat as Russian troops advance. In fact, just a few days ago, the airport, the city's airport, which is just 10 kilometers from here, was bombed. So we know who's leaving, but what about those coming in, joining the fight too? If you spend any time at the border or if you travel into Lviv, it's very likely that you're going to come across a foreigner who says that they've come here to fight. In fact, members of our team have met multiple people who say they've just done that. One man said that he was a 53-year-old Canadian who'd, put, who'd paid for an advertisement on Canadia radio station in order to make a call for donations to help him travel to Ukraine and fight. And as a result, people donated money. Somebody actually paid for his plane ticket into Poland, and it was at the Polish-Ukrainian border where he met a member of our team and asked him where he could get hold of an AK-47 from because he'd heard that guns were being given out to people who were willing to come and fight in Ukraine. There's also a 24-year-old man from Hong Kong who said that he was ready to die fighting for democracy. But the issue is, is that there are a number of people who come here to fight and they don't have any military experience. They've never been in a war, they've never been in a conflict, and they're taking unofficial routes, traveling by themselves in order to try to get to the front line and fight. That could be very dangerous for themselves, for other soldiers, and also for civilians. But there are people who... Thank you fucking people finally saying it dude it's just so weird that like for the past for the past couple of weeks now almost like people have just been celebrating these like brave heroes going out to fucking ukraine to defend ukraine and it's like dude are you insane like even the ukrainian territorial defense is terrifying okay activating like random ukrainians and giving them a fucking gun 
and being like, all right, you're the territorial defense now. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Like that even that is gonna lead to civilian casualties and friendly fire. Trained, armed military members who have been doing this for like fucking five years, six years, still end up shooting one another. Like regularly. Friendly fire is a very common occurrence. Friendly fire is a common occurrence in the police force, too. And then you got motherfuckers who don't know how to speak Ukrainian, Russian, nothing, running into Ukraine and being like, that's right, brother, ye, ye, give me a goddamn gun and a fucking wish. And the only reason why other countries' police officers don't fucking kill one another is because they're not armed. Yes, if you don't have a gun, if, you, if all of your fucking, you know, beat cops don't have AR-15s, then the likelihood that you're going to shoot one another diminishes. Because guess what? Guns in the hands of as many people as possible is never good. That's why America is like fucking PVP zone. Who are taking more official routes. The Ukrainian government is trying to encourage people to come to Ukraine and fight. And they say that so far, 20,000 people from 52 different countries have actually signed up to join the Ukrainian military. They're going to Ukrainian embassies, signing up for the International Legion, and then making their way into Lviv, where they hope to be processed uh, and then assessed and then and join the military. And they also include ex-soldiers or people who have previously previous military experience. Hind Hassan, thank you. For the last few years, even mentioning the word Ukraine to many Republicans could get a response about Hunter Biden or Burisma or a perfect phone call. But how you talk about a place changes after it's been invaded. The GOP is now trying to find ways to keep it partisan without putting too much focus on the conservatives that actually think Putin's not all that bad. Normally, I'd be like, come on, bro. There's no Republicans that are pro-Putin, but, like, there kind of are. It's very strange to see. But, like, low-key, some Republicans are, like, it does feel like they're pro-Putin. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but it certainly feels like you got homies out there that are just like, yeah, he's actually he's actually destroying, uh, you know, pedophile rings or something in, in Ukraine. <laughs> like... It's it's weird, man. It's weird. Thank you very much, and it's great to be back where it all started with the great patriots of CPAC. Thank you very much. <laughs> Reporters asked me if I thought President Putin was smart. I said, of course he's smart, to which I was greeted with, oh, that's such a terrible thing to say. I'd like to tell the truth. Yes, he's smart. The Russian invasion of Ukraine happened to coincide with this year's conservative political action conference. Former President Trump used it as a chance to revise a statement he made that Russian President Vladimir Putin's plan to invade was, quote, genius. Thank you very much. For many attendees, this year's CPAC has been about threading a needle, figuring out how to stay pro-Ukraine while remaining loyal to Trump. Recently, the former president reacted in a, in a podcast and said that he thought that it was genius. Fucking Nelk Boys, right? Or no, that's not the Nelk Boys. This is the CPAC. So it was another podcast that he went on. It wasn't even a podcast. It was a conservative radio show where he literally went on and was like, genius what Putin is doing. Invading Ukraine, genius. It's just not genius, okay? It's not. It, it is not a genius move at all to fucking invade Ukraine. Even if you do not give a fuck. What? What? <coughs> I mean, this is old, right? It's old as fuck. But even then, it's like, what the fuck is happening? You guys were, like, really patriotic and hated other countries. I guess that doesn't extend to, like, countries that help, that you think help you that Putin make had Trump win Ukraine. or something. Do you think it was genius that he did that? I think it's smart that he waited until Trump was out of office because he knew that what the consequences would have been when Trump was in office. We know that Trump is a person who doesn't care about the international protocol, which I believe can be either a good thing or a bad thing. But in the case of what we're seeing in Ukraine, it would have been a really good thing for Trump to say, hey, NATO, you have to do something. Are you at all worried that maybe there are parts of the Republican Party that are moving in a direction of saying things like... Oh My hottest take on this is that, like, 
and this is in agreement with like libs even which is that the, the putin saw no reason to invade ukraine under donald trump because donald trump was already undermining nato nato's sphere of power at the very least like calling nato's actions into question regularly even if it's from a reactionary point of view that was like idiotic and therefore there was no reason because ukraine was never under threat and ultimately uh you know they were under threat of like Western influence. Donald Trump was unironically dis dismantling American sphere of influence and, and, and obliterating single-handedly the soft power that like Americans and the goodwill that Americans had either one cultivated over the course of many, many years post-World War II or had enforced upon the planet. Uh, so on that, on that area, like his isolationism and his like reactionary perspective literally was uh part of the reason why no one really saw the need to defend the russia takes are turning me into a lib what do you mean it's just like it, it did not need to no one ever saw no one ever saw the need to do anything because america was doing everything on its own but that's part of the reason why a lot of liberals hate him because uh you know they they do see donald trump undermining u.s influence globally as a bad thing because ultimately they want the United States to do continue maintain the uh, you know global hegemonic status it has. Openly supporting Putin or openly supporting more autocratic views of government. No, I don't. I don't know. I don't, I'm, you haven't talked about Grimes and Chelsea all day because you're jealous. Why would I be jealous? And also, I'm not talking about it because I already one. I already briefly mentioned it in the beginning. And two, it's kind of weird to talk about uh, you know gossip shit about a Hasanabi head and and what they are choosing to do or whatever with potential guests of the show or friends of the show okay I'm thinking it's a republican or democrat thing i think it's a you know international problem and uh, i think we need to all work together to solve it but most republicans in high places have taken a less we're all in this together approach and have used the war in ukraine to attack president biden Biden has led the charge on international sanctions on Russia and has supplied arms to Ukraine, things that some speakers at CPAC still found ways to criticize. You were very direct in your speech that you gave a few minutes ago saying that Putin is not to be admired, that he's not a friend. Former President Trump said recently that he thought it was a smart, genius move of Putin to go and invade Ukraine. What do you I think I can't believe I'm doing this, but like it's not like Donald Trump was saying like Putin was is brilliant to invade Ukraine. He was saying it's brilliant to invade Ukraine, not on my watch. That would have shown him how it, you know, what's what. Like, isn't that what he was saying? Am I wrong? Wasn't he literally just saying like, you know, I would have fucking destroyed him. I would have destroyed. Uh, I would I would have destroyed Putin if he fucking invaded on my watch. He was too scared to do it. I mean, it's fun. It, it's fun to like, you know, run the Trump loves Putin stuff, but viewing it from a how a narcissist would have thought about it. I think you're spot on. No, no, no. He, he actually did literally say, I thought he, he did. He did follow that up by saying like Joe Biden is weak and you're wrong. He was saying it was smart to take land. Oh, okay. Then <laughs> that's crazy. Okay. Maybe I misunderstood because I thought I, I, I did feel like I, I, I feel like I've heard him say that it was like it was when they went into Donbass. He probably thought that was going to be the extent of it. No, he said that he's smart because Putin is strong, therefore smart. So what you're saying is that the leftist social media complex is unfairly taking down the Nelk video. I don't know, but I watched it and I would never take that down. Are you kidding me? On the Nelk Boys podcast, I, I'm pretty sure he like followed it. So Putin is now saying it's independent large section of Ukraine. I said, how smart is that? And he's going to go in and be a peacekeeper, Trump said. They're going to keep peace, all right. No, but I think it's, I think of it. Here's a guy who's very savvy. I know him well, very well. Guys, we're talking about a guy who literally said, <laughs> we should slap our, like, F-16s or whatever with Chinese gear on it and Chinese flags and blow Russian troops, okay? <laughs> like... <laughs> Listen, it's not like he's the smartest guy out there. <laughs> he's like, to that guy, of course Putin is brilliant. <laughs> he's a brilliant tactician. Think about it, folks. One time I saw him walking and chewing gum at the same time. Believe me, folks. 
It's crazy. As many people are doing this? That's right. One time I saw Vladimir Putin, he was able to both uh, rub his nipple in a circular fashion while also simultaneously scratching his hair left to right. Believe me, very difficult to do. Not many can do it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh jesus christ <laughs> he said it was worse he said f-22 which only the u.s fly <laughs> they'll never see it coming <laughs> what do you think when you hear that well i think what the president would tell you is that this didn't happen when he was president we didn't have an invasion of, of taiwan afghanistan didn't fall uh we didn't have an invasion of, of ukraine uh so, so the president took a piece through strength. He got along well with people. He was cordial with these other leaders, but he was also, you know, he was tough as nails. And the Russians would have never tried to do this with, with President Trump in power. Blaming Biden. Yeah, didn't he say that? By the way, this would have never happened with us. He, on the Nelk Boys podcast, Trump definitely did say he, it wouldn't have happened. Like, he wouldn't have imagined invading Ukraine under my watch or something. Biden has offered conservatives in Washington a way to sidestep the issue of Trump's words while also trying to make partisan gains. The disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan was the beginning of the end. Putin watched that, and he saw a weak and ineffective president. Former President Trump recently has not been critical of Putin, and he, in fact, has said that he uh, thinks Putin is smart, and um, he said that it was If your takeaway of the problem with Ukraine is what Trump said, you're missing the point. He's the uh, leader of your party, right, no, sir? No, no. During when he was president, uh, Ukraine wasn't invaded. When he was president, he gave him lethal weapons, not blankets. Putin's not a genius, and Biden's not brilliant. Former President Trump has not been very critical of Putin at all. I'm wondering if you think that that is helpful right now that the former president is saying things like he thinks Putin is a genius. That you know, he said that it was a, a genius kind of move of him to invade Ukraine. I, I, look, I, I think the only thing that matters is what the current president is saying or not, do, not doing or hasn't done. That's what I'm focused on. I mean, Trump isn't even on Twitter. You know, I mean. Republicans in Congress aren't just having to account or not account for what Trump says. They're also having to account for his power with voters. Former Senate. Do you guys see that? Wait, hold on. Republicans in Congress aren't just having to account or not account for what Trump says. They're also having to account. Remember that? I used to have that. Damn, I missed that, dude. That shit went for like six grand on the... Uh, I sold that to raise funds for Alvius. I miss it every day, though. We need to bring it back, folks. Trumbo, yeah. Account for his power with voters. 10K? Oh, not even six grand. 10K. Former Senator Bob Corker was the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee. He was also one of the only Republicans to actually criticize Trump during his presidency. He says he retired on his own terms, but some in Washington see his case as a warning about going against Trump. What do you make of the GOP response that you've seen? It was like a hundred dollar cutoff. What the cutout? What the fuck, lol? Yeah, I fucking had it. It was a staple piece of my stream that I signed for charity. Dude, people are so weird. People are so stupid. Guys, the person who bought it, bought it for charity to raise money for Alvius, Friends of the Show Maya's conservation. In, in Washington in the last two to three weeks. I, I'm not aware of all the comments. Let me just say this. And yeah, it's been surprising. I think people forget that, like, you know, there's a lot of negative uh uh, information out there about me and how I fucking hate charity and I like spit on poor people or whatever. I forget that like, no, I regularly do, um, you know, and use this community and you guys uh, routinely to raise funds for, for good causes. Of course, you'll never hear about that because the people that only talk about it are, are my haters who say, I don't actually fucking, you know, I don't do that, but. surprising to me to see a uh, sort of a, a dogma or an approach to Russia, really by both sides of the aisle, but uh, definitely by the Republican side for many, many years. And then to see some, some viewpoints, especially that would view Russia uh, more favorably than a 
democracy that we've tried to pull towards us for many years. There was a poll that Washington Post did recently that said that 89 percent of the Republicans that responded said that Putin was a, quote, very strong or somewhat strong leader. Only 9 percent of the Republicans that responded to the poll said the same thing of Biden. What do you make of those kinds of facts? I do wish that, uh, that Biden were a, a little stronger. If you look at the elected officials in the Senate, um, I don't think that feeling is held by except a few. Uh, my guess is that would be the same in the House. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know what has potentially popularized uh, Putin in, in the eyes of some in our country, but I'll tell you, I, I can't imagine that today people are feeling the same way. Do you think it's because someone like President Trump goes on stage at CPAC and praises him in front of a crowd? For some reason, there's been that affection there, and I, I don't know what that has, uh, I don't know what where that came from, and certainly, uh, you know. Trump withheld military aid on Ukraine in 2019 while trying to dig up dirt on Biden. Dude, dude, that's ridiculous. It's not like he didn't give any fucking military aid to Ukraine in 2019, okay? I hate that argument. Like, in the lead-up to... The part of that problem wasn't that it, they, he withheld military aid. The part of the problem was he was using, like, the American State Department interests with our foreign allies you, being utilized against our foreign adversaries for personal gain in an American election. The actual part of the problem isn't that he was, like, withholding aid. He was using that as a way to get fucking... Uh, it, it, it's just corruption. I don't know how else to describe it. People are like, oh, I can't believe he withheld aid without like mentioning the actual <laughs> side of the aid that was the real issue. You know, when the elected president uh, says things like that, it affects people's thinking. I think there's kind of a feeling in Washington that Democrats are worse than Putin. They would, some Republicans would rather criticize the current president than criticize Putin in a serious way. And I, I wonder what you think of that, how that affects the, the party. Does that influence people in the party uh, to think more positively about someone like Putin? I think that that's evident, uh, not necessarily about the Putin issue, but I think on both sides of the aisle, uh, it's a skins and shirts game, and, you know, the animus towards each other is pretty incredible, and the kind of things that people say to each other or say about the opposition is just beyond belief. That's it for Vice News tonight. Or, uh, Republicans uh, and their support for uh, Putin or their their the weird like takes about Putin will never, never not be strange to me. POV, you're an Elden Ring boss who's giving me a hard time a few hours prior. Oh my god.